Hey guys, this Walk Wednesday series is all about Chinese Unchopped, my first book, which covers the core techniques of Chinese cooking. So anything from steaming, stir frying, deep frying, braising, roasting, poaching, and double cooking, that's piecing together two or more of those core techniques. Let's get walking, I can't wait. I know you're gonna love it. This week, we're doing charred pineapple chicken in sweetened black vinegar. Now there's something about crispy fried chicken in a, wrapped in a caramelized sweet and sour sauce that you guys seem to absolutely love. I have no idea why. Um, but I'm gonna start with some onion and pepper. And this dish actually comes from my very own wedding. I cooked for my own wedding, believe it or not. I would never recommend that to anyone. Um, but it, the, the beauty of it is it is a sweet and sour, but with sort of charring the pineapple in the oven first and getting the pineapple into the sauce and just bubbling it away and allowing that sauce to sort of reduce over a bit of time, you get a really deep, natural sweet and sour flavour from it. And that Qingqiang black vinegar that I'm using, that sort of black rice vinegar, it's a very unique and distinct flavour. Now, if you can't find the Chinese black rice vinegar, uh, then you can swap it out with uh, some a, a mixture of balsamic, just a, a cheap, thin balsamic vinegar um, uh, and some light soy. Uh, about sort of three to one vinegar to light soy. If you really wanted that sort of rice flavour, then toast a little bit of rice um, in, a, in a dry pan and add that to your mix of light soy and balsamic. Let it sit there for a little bit of time and it'll get a very similar sort of flavour. I'm just setting up the simpler parts of my wok clock here before I deal with my pineapple. You can, of course, use tinned pineapple, but I've got fresh pineapple here. So I'm gonna cut this. I quite like using fresh. You can use the core and every part of it, even the skin, if you wanna use or get extra flavor into the sauce. A lot of people don't really know how to deal with a whole fresh pineapple like this, but the kernels are the hard part. So you want to go round with your knife first. And as I say, keep those skins, give them a quick wash. I'll pop them in here first and rinse them. And then you can use them to add flavour to your sweet and sour sauce. And the kernels, you just want to find sort of regular lines and then cut those out with a V-shaped cut like so. Once you've gone around the pineapple, then you want to cut it in half. Woo! And then half again, and just take the core out. But again, don't waste that. Pop that in with the pineapple skin. You can give it a quick rinse before we then compile the sauce in that saucepan. So these chunks here, I am actually gonna just keep in those quarters and I'll probably only use a quarter for one dish. You can use the rest and just have it as charred pineapple or fresh, however you wish. I'm gonna roast it all though, because it really accentuates the flavor when you roast it dry like this. So it's almost concentrated pineapple sweetness. That's gonna go into the oven as high as you can do it. So 230 to 250 degrees C for about 20 minutes until it gets nice and charred around the edges. So I've washed my pineapple out and then I'm just gonna to start to compile the sauce. So I've got my black rice vinegar here, which I'm gonna go for four tablespoons, which is pretty much all of that. A couple of spoons of sugar, so that's my sweet and sour sort of balance. And then a tablespoon 
of dark soy. So that's my sweet sour flavours. With a classic sweet and sour, I would just have that sort of straight into the wok and it would caramelise very quickly. But what I want to do with this is I want to bring as much pineapple flavour into the sauce as possible. So I'm going to take about 200 mils of chicken stock, pour that into it, and I'm going to reduce that right down over the next sort of 10 to 15 minutes. And that will become more and more syrupy, which I'll then use as a wrapping sauce for my crispy chicken later on. Now my chicken thigh, most of it's already cut up, but I'll show you how I've prepared it. I'm going for sort of slightly flatter, quite wide pieces of chicken. And if you want to know how to sort of unravel your chicken like I'm doing here, then check out the knife skills meat video that we've got on our Saturday specials. So nice, sort of thin, good sized chunks of chicken there. Almost like mini escallops of chicken. And now to wash my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so my pineapple is roasting away. My sauce is on the boil and that's simmering on a sort of medium to high heat to reduce down nicely. And then all I've got to do now is season up my chicken and make sure I get that nice, sort of dry, dusty white batter that you guys would be pretty used to now if you've seen the sweet and sour, crispy chili beef, crispy squid. It's the same process. So I've got some, a pinch of sugar, a couple of spoons of light soy sauce, got a little pinch of five spice here, and then a bit of sesame oil. Give that a good mix through, get all that flavour into my thin slices of chicken. It smells great. And then the egg is not really for the marinade, but it's to help the corn flour stick around the pieces of chicken. Now you can see we've got a whole load of corn flour here, which I'm just going to season that up as well. So some salt and pepper into that corn flour mix. And then we're going to start to add either your corn flour to your chicken or your chicken to your corn flour, but we need lots and lots of corn flour for this chicken to, it'll get a bit sticky first, and then the pieces of chicken will start to separate out. And this is a sort of foolproof way of making sure that every piece of chicken gets nice and crispy. So at the moment you can see it's all sort of sticking together, and that means that I haven't rubbed enough corn flour around each piece of chicken before I then deep fry it. More corn flour will help. And this is where people kind of say, oh, how are we, why are you using so much corn flour? And that's, it's for that separation to make sure that every piece comes out nice and crispy. So once you've run your fingers through your pieces of chicken, they start to separate out and become a little bit more sort of crummy in texture. So that's ready to deep fry. My sauce has had about sort of 15 minutes on a medium to high heat. I don't want to lose all of the sauce, so I'm going to pour that out now. And it can reduce more when I use it later on, but this is definitely a sort of a lighter, slightly less sticky version of a sweet and sour. Smells incredible. It's got that real sort of sweet, savoury flavour to it. So that's ready. My pineapple should be almost finished charring. So I'm going to take that out first, and then I'm going to start to deep fry, finish the dish off. So when you're deep frying anything, make sure you've got everything ready and you're set up nice and organised, so you don't have to run around anywhere. I'm going to check the oil. Never fill your oil more than halfway up your wok. Once it's bubbling nicely or fizzing like this, then you're at about 180 degrees C. And just lay them in carefully and just separate those out. It's on a high heat here so it can get an immediate seal. It's always good to deep fry in batches, even if you've got a nice surface area like this wok here, so it comes out much crispier. If you overload your wok with too much, then it'll just cool your wok down and you'll lose a lot of that heat. You won't get that same crispy finish. So there's a lot less bubbling. My chicken's all floating at the top. It's looking very nice and crispy. So you can pull that out. It doesn't take long. You're talking about two to three minutes if they're nice and thinly cut. 
So the chicken's nice and crispy. Just gonna cut nice big chunks of pineapple. And that can go onto my wok clock of ingredients. All we've gotta do now is walk away. Unfortunately, the gas hob is just conked out, so I'm gonna go straight onto the induction here. From here on in, it's all high heat. I've got my wok clock ready, so I've got my onion, pepper, my charred pineapple. I've got some toasted sesame seeds here just to garnish at the end. My chicken's all fried. I can't, I'm not gonna put all of that chicken and everything in at the same time. I'm gonna go for about half the amount. It's much like making a sweet and sour chicken or pork. Smoking hot oil first. Your onions and pepper go in. I'm gonna sear that nicely, so just fold that round. Make sure they get a good char around the edge of those veg. Pineapple got that really intense flavor now. That can go in. It's already been charred, so it doesn't really need to stay in there for too long. My sauce here, again, it's quite liquidy at this moment. So I don't mind if it reduces down again a little bit further. Bring all that in together. Keep that on a really high heat. There should be just enough sauce to wrap around the crispy chicken. And you can see now that texture of the sauce is becoming more sticky. Not thick, just sticky and smooth. That's ready for my chicken. And then one, two, three, five or six crosses through. So my charred pineapple chicken is now ready to serve. So you can see there, you've got that beautiful color on the charred pineapple and the chicken has stayed nice and crispy. Back to my favorite part of the day. Mm. It's a pineapple that started the show for me. Really intense, smoky, sweet, sour, natural flavor from that charring. And actually this sauce is much lighter than the classic sweet and sour. Simple stuff, maybe a little bit longer than preparing a normal sweet and sour or chili beef, but well worth the effort. Guys, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to tell all your friends and like, like, like.